face jug creation through coil building method two. That's what we're up to now. We're going to be working on a similar approach, coil building. I'll use the wheel again instead of a turntable, but it's the same method. I get to take advantage of the wheel spinning a little faster, but you can still do everything I'm doing just with a turntable and paying attention to form and to, to symmetry. But what this method is, is a little bit different in that you build the piece. Um, as you're building from the bottom, you actually build in the facial features. And I'll show you an example of a piece that was made that way. I'm gonna walk back here. You'll see me go back here. And here you have it. So this piece here, quite large, right? You're looking at what, 30 inches maybe, um, maybe even 36 inches. So it's a big piece and it is uh, made by coil building on the wheel. And as I'm working, I'm, I'm building up and adding um, the facial features as I go. This is quite extensively larger than a traditional face jug piece. Don't really expect, you might want to try making something 12 inches, 14 inches, maybe even 16 inches, but not this large perhaps in your first effort. I'll put this over here and it can watch us work. But this method is what I use when I'm working on something larger here. Clearly, this is where contemporary art interests take over. So what's happening is I'm interested in the face jug as a way of creating um, a, a sculptural head. But at the same time, I'm also interested in it. I'm, I'm I, I, I completely um, engage in the concepts of the, the origins of the, the, the ceramic tradition. And I have a lot of respect for it and a lot of interest in it. And I'm working with my contemporary ideas, but fully acknowledging that this came from um, this amazing period in our history with such tragedy and such an evidence of um, human uh, capacity for a rising above this whole um, human dignity that comes from um, redemption of creativity. So I'm very interested in the whole origins of these, these pots, but I also really love making sculptural heads. So that's what we'll see here. So this may take a few different videos as I go up. Um, we may have some pausing may be necessary to stop and let it dry a little bit, but we'll get the whole process uh, on, on, film, on video here as we go. So we're gonna look down, I'm working from the other side of the wheel this time, so you can actually see my hands a little clearer. And I'm going to start uh, the same way. It all starts the same as you saw in the first video. And that is, we start by paddling and just compressing Put the wheel back on there. Again, the wheel head. This bat comes loose. There we go. So I'm just compressing the clay down. This makes a very, very strong uh, foundation of the strong bottom of the pot. I'm just hitting it down. The one thing I'm doing by moving the pile around is just because as I hit it, the wood gets a little damp and it begins to stick. I don't want that. I don't want to lift the bat off the wheel head. So I'm just working and working and working this around, just make it And there it goes off the pins as well. Got to put the bat back on. There we go. So we continue. Just compressing. Compressing makes a very, very strong bottom, very unlikely to crack. Also gets a lot of your frustrations out. Whack and play is a good way to frustrations. And I don't know if you've noticed, 
notice, but we're in kind of frustrating times. So, uh, That's a pretty good uh, start there. Get it back on the wheel. And you can see once again, it's not perfectly centered. So I can find my needle tool. And I think I can find my needle tool. Where is my needle tool? Oh, here it is. Always a problem. And I'm gonna um, make it perfectly round now just by, just by um, holding it steady and then peeling off this excess clay here. And now we have a beautifully round beginning. So then everything starts as before. So I'm gonna start by adding the coil here. And again, done. wiping in, lifting up, wiping in, lifting up, wiping in, lifting up, wiping in, lifting up. And I continue that all the way around. And I really dig into the bottom section. It is, remember, I've made it a little thicker just for this purpose to get a little clay and wipe it into the coil. All the, all the activity, the whole concept of coil building, as you work it, you're trying to convince the clay that it's always been one piece of clay. It's always been one piece of clay. And you can see that my pattern is pretty even there. You, that I'm overlapping the thumb, keeping it an even thickness, and I'm not squeezing the clay. I'm just wiping the clay down and up into to help it join. And especially with the first uh, coil of clay, it's a good thing to just stop when you get to the end of that, that run. And then you can see under here again, here is where the, the bottom is in the coil. So you really wanna make sure you dig into that bottom and get the clay up and into the coil, wipe it up into the coil all the way around. You really wanna make sure that you gotta convince this clay, it's always been just one piece of clay. So really, digging in and lifting up and wiping that clay to join it. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna come back and reverse with my thumb, just push the clay down, just to even things out a little bit and um, reinforce the join. We get these two pieces of clay to know they've always been one. And especially here, when we start moving up with the coils, the coils are all moving in the same direction. They're all the same kind of clay, they're all coils of clay, snakes of clay, ropes of clay that I'm putting together. But in this first joining, I'm joining a flat slab of clay to a round coil of clay. And the clay is going to want to, as it dries it's in fires, it's going to want to move in different directions. So we really want to make sure that we really get it joined in very well. So that's our first step, wiping with our thumb and fingers inside and out. I can turn the, the wheel with my fingers here. And that helps wipe the clay again in a different direction, reinforcing the join. And I can do the same with the wheel. And again, I'm using the wheel here um, because it is kind of a convenient way of doing things quickly. And, uh, and for this video, you can actually see how it goes. But all of this is coil building and, and you can do all of this with, uh, by, without a wheel and just work uh, by hand. So now I'm just gonna, um, just compress this and smooth the base here a little bit. And I can leave a spiral again if I want. No one's ever gonna see it because I'm gonna close this up and it'll be a, a, you know, it'll be a, a jug. So no one will see that spiral, but I'll know it's there. That's kind of important. So I'll start with another coil and I'm wiping that in. And I'm just gonna put a few on, you've seen me, do this in the previous video. Just gonna work, work these together, move quickly. And you may wanna move a little bit slower because you haven't done as much coiling as I have. 
And just to keep control of the form, make sure it stays where you want it and pretty symmetrical. Um, you can continue to work the clay. Remember, when you come to an end like this, you never take the clay and bump it right up against here. You don't you start by overlapping uh, when you join it again. So here we go again, just joining that clay all the way around. You can see me wiping with my thumb, pushing the clay together. I also kind of let the clay uh, turn a little bit as I push it down and I, I, I kind of join it slightly inside the previous coil and that helps keep it vertical rather than spreading out. You wanna watch, make sure that your clay does not spread out quickly or at all. Um, so I'm just working here from the point of view of a head, we can say that I'm sort of in the chin area here. I'm working um, with, um, what will eventually become the chin of the piece. And so now I'm gonna, you can see I have all these coils here. I'm gonna just wipe them with my fingers. And once I start working out the chin physically start sculpting and pushing the chin out, I'm gonna, this piece is no longer gonna be um, in the round. It's no longer gonna be completely symmetrical. So the wheel will uh, really function only as a turntable, as a banding wheel. It, I won't be able to spin the, the wheel uh, quickly and do the kinds of things you saw me do when making that previous pot. Um, I, I won't be able to do this, for instance, because um, once I start making it asymmetrical, it no longer will function this way. So you'll see what I mean as we get there. I'm just now just smoothing the inside and the outside simultaneously. And then I'm gonna use a rib to, to reinforce that. So just smoothing it. And again, the smoothing does so many things. It evens the thickness of the walls and compresses the clay, helps join the clay. All of those things are happening with the smoothing process. I'm gonna use this now, as I smooth it out, I'm also kind of pressing outward because I want, I want this part of the piece now to come all the way out, a little, come out a little bit more like that. So you can see it's come out. And now I'm gonna designate this as the front of the pot. And so I'm gonna start thinking about what, what does a chin look like? And I'm just pushing my fingers on the inside here to see it from, I'll do it from over here. I'm just pushing out with my fingers here to create what I think might be a kind of chin shape. Okay, so now I've started to develop the chin. You can see that here. Maybe make it a little bit wider. That would be good. And then I can start the coiling again. So this piece of plastic out of the way and start with um, some more coil. Let's go back here and start joining coil. And hopefully with this video, I hope to get into at least the mouth of, of this project, get into building the mouth. And the only uh, thing that will prevent me from doing that is if the clay gets too saggy, if it's too wet, I'll need to pause and let it stiffen up a little bit before I go any further. But we'll see here. So I'm just building this up here. I wanna get a little more distance for the chin. And you can see now, the piece is no longer symmetrical. It's no longer round, it's kind of oblong. So I can't really just spin the wheel and hold my hands in place, it'll just be too wobbly. So now I'm really um, just coil building. Uh, that's the whole thing here. Not coiling, I'm, I'm on the wheel, but I'm, I'm not throwing, you know, there's the first pot you saw a little bit of throwing and coil building at the same time. This is not that. So, just gonna finish this last coil here and we will, there we go, start thinking about, well, the mouth could be right in here. So I wanna start 
considering applying the lower lip. So I will show you that in a minute. I'm just going to make sure these coils get joined like that. There we go. And now I'm going to use my ribs to work the clay, smooth the clay. And one of the things you're going to notice is, yep, I'm not, I'm not spinning the wheel real fast because it's no longer symmetrical, as I've said. So these, these jug heads um, really are a remarkable um, American form of ceramics. And one of the earliest forms, these came out about 1850. So, so we can start seeing that. And you really want to start visualizing this as a, as a human head, whatever that, however that helps you imagine it. And this brings up one of the principles of all art making, whether you're painting, you're sculpting, you're potting, or, or anything, which is, I'm fascinated by how ugly stuff looks for the first 80%. I mean, this piece here looks pretty uneventful. It looks pretty um, un desirable, not, not fabulous um, at all, right? It, it's, it, it's looking okay, but there's really nothing going on. It doesn't have the finish that that piece that I showed you um, earlier has because it's not finished. It's at the very early stages. So if you look here now, I'm thinking about this being the lip here. It's got a pretty well-developed chin here. I'm gonna kind of put that impression here, just indent there a little bit. And I'm gonna put a lip right here. So, um, and I'm going to pull this down a little bit because I want the lip to be uh, kind of, I want the mouth to be a little bit open. So I'm going to work on that. We'll see how that goes. And I want it to be open because I want to try to put some porcelain teeth in. And I'll show you that here. This is, um, this is for two different pots, the one I showed you earlier and then this one. Um, this is sets of teeth that I've made. And I've just sat down with a little porcelain clay and sculpted these teeth. And you can see I even have um, the, the roots of the teeth in there. And the way that works is that when you'll see it when I do it, I'm going to add the teeth to, I'm gonna add the teeth right to the, um, into the, what would be the equivalent of the gums behind the lips of the, of the, of the piece. And what that does for me is it creates, um, it, you dig those in, they're, they're dried in the sun, so they're really stiff, uh, but I'll push them in. And then what happens is um, the, um, the clay, the, this is wet clay, that's dry clay. And as the, this clay shrinks around the, um, the, the, the roots of those pieces, what you end up getting is you end up getting a, um, a hold. It starts to grip the teeth and they don't come out. So it works, it's a nice method. So what I'm working on now is the bottom lip. And I wanna start by making a nice, even round, flat cylinder. But then what I wanna do also is, see I'm holding my hand at an angle and I'm gonna taper it on both ends. I'm just gonna kind of give it a bit of a taper and you'll see how that works for us. I'm just gonna work on making it tapered. So it's fat in the middle and tapering out on both sides like that. So that's our, that's our lower lip. So then I'm going to give it a little bit of a bend, bend it. And as I work, I don't want to touch, I don't want to mess with this section right here. This is the, I'm going to see if I can get in here. This is with, oh, uh, it's got here. See. So here's my lower lip. And if you look, you look at your mouth in the mirror, you'll see 
Uh, now I've got a beard, so it's going to be a little hard, but you can see that the lower lip it rolls in to your mouth. It just rolls around, very kind of round and full. And then right in here, it just comes. It doesn't. It's not a chunk sitting out on the plate. It just it just uh, changes direction and flows right into the chin. So that's what I want to think about. And this part here of my clay, this this section right here, is already round from the rolling out. So I want to take advantage of that. So let's go back and see what we can do with that. Um, I'm going to go grab one tool. Very professional. Okay, so this is a scoring tool right here. It, uh, you buy them in cooking shops. They come in all kinds of forms and they're all, they all work really well. And um, they're onion holders. They're used uh, in cooking to hold on to an onion as you slice it very thinly. So you can see that I'm scoring that area. And then I'm gonna score uh, where I'm gonna join it. And then I'm just going to use this water here. It's, it's got a little slip in it, not much. And just add some moisture there. So you can see um, the lower lip is starting to go into place here. I'm going to hold it here. And then notice I put my thumb right in the center. And I'm going to wipe that right down into the chin. So I'm going to make sure that the lip feels like it's just part of the whole face. It's not a separate applied thing. It's going right into the, the face itself. So it looks like it's always been part of the face. So we'll get a little look at that. And what I'm gonna do now is just use my rib to kind of sculpt that idea of the, the lower, the, the, the part of the lip that goes right into the lower part of, of your face there. So you can see it's just worked right in. And now I need an upper lip, but I also want this to hold liquid for some reason, just because it's, it's part of the whole traditional idea of the jug. All of my pieces, they don't um, leak. They don't, they, they hold liquid. Um, I liked um, when I was researching uh, Clayton Bailey's um, fantastic artist, Clayton Bailey, who uh, passed away, I think this year. Um, a wonderful, wonderful artist who um, just one of the most creative, intelligent, humorous, artist I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. And what he said about his is that he made sure that the noses, um, the nostrils of the nose went right into the center of the thing. So all of their noses ran. And it was something he thought was very, um, very important in his design that, that they were runny nosed face jugs. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm gonna make a little kind of the back part of the mouth. And I'm just gonna join that in and it does a couple of things. One is um, it will eventually become the seal that keeps this from leaking. The other thing it's going to do is give me uh, the top of where I can put my, um, how I can join, give me a way to join the uh, upper lip as well. Um, and this will also be uh, where the teeth end up being attached um, in theory. So I'm excited about that. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to join this part. I'm not going to go for the upper lip just yet. I'm going to not touch this too much. I just want to get rid of more marks that I might have left on it. There we go. So you can start to see a kind of a very uh, pow pouty lower lip there. And um, what I'm going to do now is um, you'll see 
and you start coiling again, in order to attach that portion, I'm just gonna, you can do this, you can take your coil, you see I'm starting to coil the piece on there, and I'm just gonna work this section like it's always been part of the pot. I'm just gonna work that in. Because I need I need the upper I need a the part above the the lip to um, to really sculpt the top lip into place. So I'm just going to coil this in and go up a few few turns. To really create. Um, a solid join here and get a little bit distance coming upward as I start to make the mount. That's actually pretty good there. I want to see, I've got to join it on this outside. And there's a few little areas where there's some gaps in place. I need to take a little extra play and work it into those gaps so we don't have any cracking or excess holes. So I'm going to just work that in. And one of the things I, I, I'm kind of inventing this as I go along because I want to get um, those teeth, I want to give those teeth a home, a place to go. And um, I know that um, I need space to do that. So I'm kind of working this out as I go along. Normally I put two lips right in, the, the lower lip and the top lip rests right on top of the lower lip. You can see that, uh, you saw that in the piece I showed you um, the larger piece has a lips resting. You can see if I can show you that over here. If you look at that piece, you can see that the top lip rests right on the lower lip. But in this case, I want an open mouth so we can see the teeth. So And I'm thinking that should be enough. So um, I'm gonna work on an upper lip here and then we'll know if it's enough. I think it will be. Um, but before I do that, I need to finish joining this coil all the way around. I forgot to finish the outside here. So I wanna make sure I stay with my process. First step, second step, third step, all the way through. So that's working nicely. I'll take my, my rib here and work that part of the joining. And notice when I work with my rib, oh, I'm sorry, I'm showing you a great picture of my computer this whole time. My apologies, there we go. Real professional job here. So you'll notice that when I'm working with the rib, I work in two different directions. I'm always moving the rib in two different directions and that gives me a very even surface. It, it prevents me from getting digs and une unevenness and inconsistencies in the form. Uh, that keeps the plane of the clay very even, smooths out any irregularities. If I just went in one direction, then what would happen would be that uh, any inconsistencies would just be reinforced and get worse and worse and worse. So that's what's happening there. And I'll just work a little bit on the inside here, but I've already done most of that. Okay, so now I'm gonna make the top lip and I want that to be a little longer because the top lip tends to uh, overlap the corners of the bottom lip. So I'll grab some clay here. And I will start to work it together. So I'm just gonna join this clay here.
And um, this might be more than I need, but it's, it's, a, it's kind of a, a start and we'll see how it goes. I'm just compressing the clay together, really want to work it to make sure I don't get any air bubbles. Compress it and then even it out. I'll go over to a table and roll it. And once I get this mouth in, we'll stop for a little while and then I'll start the video again as we work towards the numbers and that sort of thing. Okay, so just working on smoothing it out. So you see we have a, um, a tapered coil again on both ends. And if I just lay it right on the bottom there, you can see how much it looks like a mouth. I'm just gonna open it up a little bit so we have room for the teeth. And I'm just gonna push that, and kind of turn that into a, a downward thing. I don't know that there's gonna be all that smiley. Let's see what happens if we just do that. We'll join this one to the existing clay that we've got there. I just want to keep it open so that we have room for some teeth. And so you can start to see what the, what the mouth looks like. And I'll just smooth that out just a little bit like this. And then we'll start the next video as we started working towards the, the nose and building that up. But I'll be done with this in just a moment. And then we will rejoin this in part two. The nose should be very exciting. So there you go. You can see it really does look like a mouth and I can move it around and make different kind of kind of work towards expression on it. It's gone a little too far on, on this side here. That's too long. So I can just come in here and break it down a little bit like that. And uh, that's looking pretty good. So we'll get back to it um, in part two. Stay safe, make art.